<gasps> hey, what's up, YouTubers? It's Jay Dreamers here. I'm just goofing around. All right, no, but seriously, I have a lot of stuff to share with you guys right now. I've already done this video twice because I have a lot of stuff I want to cram in. So I'm going to go a little fast. First of all, who's this guy? This is Kevin Bowers. He's new on YouTube, and I highly recommend going to check out his channel. He just started, but he's already putting out great content. Uh, the main thing is that he is a teenager, and I'm gonna shout out. Um, I'm gonna shout out any teenager that starts doing their own YouTube stuff, as far as exploring the world we live in, life, and sharing things with the world at large. Because I think that the youth, you younger people out there. Not to say that I'm old or anything, but the younger people of the world have electric minds. You guys are the ones that challenge things the best. You guys are the ones that are the least affected by all the debris that the world has thrown at the rest of us. So, um, definitely go check him out. Actually, the reason I'm doing this video is because I'm piggybacking off of one of his videos, The, Flat Earth, uh, the Earth is Flat Episode 1. I'm going to talk about something that he had mentioned and uh, get into some other stuff. So thank you, Kevin, and uh, definitely go check him out. His name is Kevin Bowers, and his icon is a little selfie in the mirror. <laughs> so, um, all right, let's get right into it. So Kevin was showing this diagram right here, and he was talking about gravity and the gravitational pull, uh, you know, that pulls the sun around the moon and pulls the moon around the earth. Dang, pulls the earth around the sun. You know what I mean. Anyways, okay, so here's the here's here's something that I just wanted to mention. Um, we've all been taught that the moon orbits the earth. However, look how close the moon is to the sun in this picture. Now, if the sun's gravitational pull is strong enough to pull the earth that's further away at this point in time than the moon is right here, then it seems to me that it would be strong enough to pull the moon a little bit further away from its orbit around the Earth, which means that every single time that the moon reaches its uh, perigee or apogee, anyways, the, every time it gets closer to the sun, it would go outward a little bit. It would go further away a little bit, and which means it would spiral away from the Earth until either it created its own orbit around the sun or it just smashed right into the sun, which is more likely. So another thing that Kevin also mentioned is that um, that people have talked about the north and south poles of our planet in particular, and this is a uh, a magnetic north and south pole. So I wondered how does this whole magnetism work in our galaxy or in our solar system? You know that they talk to us about. So I'm going to talk to you guys about magnetism, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, what I think we should expect to see as far as magnets in space and how they should be correlating with one another. But first, before I do, I'm going to get into what is our planet made out of. That's what this picture right here is for. This is an official NASA picture from their website of a snapshot they took with the iPhone. Um... They just pulled the earth apart real quick, snapped the picture, and I'm, just, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, okay. Anyways, um, so here we have the core, the outer core, the mantle, and the crust. Or some people refer to the core as the inner core. I don't know why, it's kind of redundant. But I want to talk to you about the temperatures, all right? So we're taught that the core here is made out of solid iron, solid iron. Now, it's supposed to get hotter as you go towards the middle, right? So the middle should be the hottest of all. And yet, the middle is solid iron, and the outer core is liquid iron. And there's some other elements mixed in there as well, some other metals, but mostly iron is what we're taught. So wouldn't we expect the inner core to be more melted or hotter than the outer core, which is melted, solid to me implies cooler. And I've read online, I've done about two hours of research on this before I jumped into this video, you know, along with other stuff that I've been taught or indoctrinated with. So some people actually think out there that the core of the earth started cooling off uh, 
sometime around 2 billion years ago, which is half the lifespan of the Earth, which to them implies that the core of the Earth uh, is not as old as the Earth itself. It's crazy, I know. That's um, interesting stories they tell us, right? So anyways, let's get into something really interesting. I want to keep you guys going on this. What is the temperature of the core of the Earth? The temperature of the core of the Earth, according to LiveScience.com right here, is 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit. That is so hot. That's unbelievably hot. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how hot that is in a minute, okay? To give you a great comparison. So, the core of iron at the Earth, of solid iron, is 10,800, we'll just call it 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit, all right? So I wondered, at what temperature does iron melt? It melts at 2,800. So at around a third of that, iron melts. So the core should have been melted like um, at a way, way cooler temperature. So here's another diagram of the core of the Earth. They rounded up to 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, why is iron that was supposed to melt at 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit, why is it still solid at the core of the Earth? Well, what they will tell you is that, well, all these other layers are compressing it and compressing it and, and pulling in on it. And so because of that compression, it cannot melt. But I have a question for you. I typed in, at what temperature... <laughs> Does iron go from a liquid to a gas? Check this out. Iron becomes a liquid at 2,800 degrees Fahrenheit and a gas at 5,182 degrees Fahrenheit. So our core at 10, uh, about 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit is twice as hot as the temperature it takes to turn it into a gas form. So if it could turn into a gas form, why is it not just turning into gas and then the planet just falls in on itself? <laughs> um, first of all, that's probably why they can't have it turn into a gas because then we would have a giant hole in the middle of our Earth and then there would be no mass or not enough mass to, as to what they're telling us. Anyways... All right, I think I made my point there. But I want to tell you how hot 11,000 degrees is. I typed in, what is the temperature of the sun? The surface temperature of the sun is only, in comparison, 9,939 degrees Fahrenheit. So what they're saying is the core of our planet is hotter than that star that we don't want to get too close to for fear of burning up and incinerating. We have something hotter than that just relatively a, a few miles away underneath us, okay? Um, does that sound outrageous to you or am I just crazy? <laughs> All right, so let, let the implication sink in. I mean, there's other implications out there. What does this mean as far as other things go? I'll let you do the, the thinking on that one. But I want to move on to magnetism real quick. And I'm going to try to play a video here. I've got a lot of windows open, so I don't know if the video will play or not. Oh, cool. It's playing. All right, so this is a bunch of magnets that are basically all coming together. Now, if our solar system is, in fact, magnetic... All right, let's stop that. If our solar system is magnetic, and here's a picture of what our Earth looks like. This is its magnetic field. Now look where America is, right? This is supposedly the northern magnetic pole. And down here under fictional Antarctica is the southern magnetic pole. However, let me read you something. I'll get to that picture in a minute. It says... The north side of a magnet is attracted to the south side of another magnet. Now, I was doing my research. I wanted to see how magnets work, you know. just wanted to double check. 
However, the north side of a compass points towards the North Pole. This can only mean that the North Pole is really the magnetic south and that the south magnetic pole is really the magnetic north, which is the exact opposite of what we are shown here. It's the exact opposite of what we've been taught. Our north is really the magnetic south. So once again, reality and truth is flipped 180. It's turned upside down and it's inverted. Um, so there's the picture of the north. Um, so remember, the North Pole above America, or above everything really, um, sh is really our magnetic south pole according to our own compasses. Now let's look at this picture. I call it the Spider-Man picture because this is clearly a painting and they put Spider-Man's logo right there. But anyways, so let's just say, I don't know which side of this sun is the magnetic north or south, but I did look it up, I did Google it, and the sun does have a magnetic northern hemisphere and a magnetic southern hemisphere. And it flip-flops every 11 years. But let's just say that this right here is the magnetic north of the sun. So that would mean that our planet here, with the north facing perpendicular to it, is facing the wrong direction. As far as magnets go, the north attracts the south, right? So our planet should be tilted this direction. And either way, one of our poles, our, our North Pole or our South Pole, should not be going up and down in comparison to the sun. They should be aligned with the sun, which means that one of those poles should be on the inside track as it orbits around the sun. Um, so that's just something else that I noticed there. Uh, what else? Okay, so I think I have another video to show you guys. Oh, okay. So let's think about this whole creation story. You know, science tells us, well, in the beginning, you know, there was like, there was like a, a chunk and it's, I guess it was iron and that chunk of iron, uh, fell into the gravitational pull of the sun and started orbiting. Well, smaller pieces of iron whoosh, stuck to it. This is so ridiculous. And some other other pieces of space debris whoosh, stuck to that, right? And I'm guessing that this is where we get the spin from because other than that, I have no idea why we're even spinning. I don't know why we're spinning. I mean, no one's ever explained to me a good reason why we're spinning, okay? And, and why everything – anyways, I don't want to get into that. So stuff's push, sticking together and sticking together. Well, the center of our world, they say, is uh, this iron, and it's so hot that it should be liquid. All right, so if I go back in time, I'm guessing that we might – people might say it was liquid floating around and that the liquid was attracting to the other liquid. I don't know. Maybe they're saying that solid chunks just whoosh, bounced off one another and like kept bouncing and more kept bouncing and more kept bouncing and pretty soon it all attracted together through the magical force of gravity or maybe magnetism, who knows. But I just wanted to show you a cool video of liquid when it's attracted to a magnet, all right? So this liquid is actually infused with iron itself. And as you can see, there's no Goldilocks zone. There's no... There's no safe zone where it all does this. Do you know what the solar system should be doing? The solar system, all of our planets, should be crashing into one another because of their magnetic pull on one another. Just like all these magnets right here, once you set one of them off, once magnets start an attraction, they don't have a Goldilocks zone. They, they, start, they go faster and faster until they clash together. OK, especially in the vacuum, the supposed vacuum of space. All right. Like we should see these things as these as the attraction starts. It does not stop. There is nothing to pull it away. Anyways, uh, that's my video, everyone. Go check out Kevin's can channel and um, let me know if you have any ideas or thoughts about um, 
the stuff that I presented. 